Hey, what's going on folks? This is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. Thank you so much for watching. This is part three of a three-part series on the teardown of this here Chrysler 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. As I'm tearing this thing apart, I'm going to be using some methods that aren't necessarily the correct methods to use for an engine that you plan on reusing or repairing. This engine, as I said in the other videos, is going to the junkyard whenever I'm done with it. This is mainly just for entertainment purposes and uh, just to give you an idea of how this thing is put together and how the various parts on the engine function. That being said, let's go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to start out by removing the oil pump. This here is the oil pump and it's responsible for pumping oil under pressure throughout the engine to lubricate the engine. Now right here you have an electrical connector that slides right out of the side of the block here and this electrical connector with the wiring goes over here to your oil pressure control solenoid. Now the PCM will actually command this oil pressure control solenoid on or off and based on that it will deliver a different oil pressure throughout the engine based on whatever is needed at the time. Now the oil pump is held on by four bolts Two on this side, two on that side. We'll go ahead and remove those. Now, once those four bolts are removed, the oil pump just comes right off, just like that. So here's the oil pump off of the vehicle here. And you see you got this oil passage right here, and then your pickup there. Now, whenever it's sitting upright, this oil pump actually sits like that, and the oil pickup sits down in the sump. Sucks oil in through there, and it pumps oil out right there. Let me go ahead and put my impact on there, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see that or not, it's pumping air right now and whenever I put my finger over that hole right there, it pressurizes and when I release, it gives a little pssst. As you are aware of earlier, I think part one, this is actually driven by the timing chain. There's a sprocket that bolts up right here and that timing chain spins it that's what causes it to pump and we're going to go ahead and dissect this thing and look on the inside and see how this thing actually functions all right let's go ahead and remove our oil pickup this is what picks up the oil from the oil sump there all right you can actually without me taking this back off here yeah you can actually see up in there this is a looks like a vein type pump you got those little veins inside there and that's what pumps the oil but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off anyway uh, first I'm gonna take the oil pressure control solenoid out so I'm gonna remove this little clip here there you are and that's our oil pressure control solenoid right there all right let's go ahead and take this off the rest of the way here Once we've got our bolts loose there, this should just come right off. Separate the two halves here. Okay, so I got this thing cleaned up a little bit better for you. And I'm going to try to explain how this thing works without butchering the explanation. Uh, I'll do my best anyway. You got two halves of the housing here. And of course, you have your main part of your pump inside there with the veins on it. And it rotates like this. Well, whenever this is rotating, it creates a suction where the oil pickup is plugged into the back of the oil pump there. And that suction action is created by... The mechanism inside the pump here that rotates like this and you can see on either side of the rotating piece you have passages on this side you have larger passages on this side you have smaller passages well whenever these rotate just follow that passage right there you can see that as it comes to the other side of the housing there it becomes smaller and whenever that happens the oil gets pressurized and the oil then is extruded into this passage of the back housing here and of course it then goes in through here into this passage and then out through the main oil feed up into the engine there so now this part of the oil pump right here kind of rocks back and forth inside there and that helps to regulate the oil pressure and also there is a, a regular oil pressure regulating valve right here that is inside this high pressure passage right there you got a little ball right there a little check ball and when the pressure gets too high 
that check ball will be moved off its seat like that and it will just dump excess oil pressure back into the oil sump there. So not the most thorough description on how an oil pump works on this. I'm going to post some more information down in the description about that and also post some links to other websites that may help you a little bit more in understanding how an oil pump works there. There were some things that I didn't actually go over with this particular oil pump on this engine here. So for the sake of the video, we got a lot of ground to cover. We're going to go ahead and keep on going. Uh, check out the description down below there for more information. All right, now we're going to go ahead and remove the windage tray. That's this little tray right here and it serves a few purposes one thing it does is it kind of gives it a little bit more rigidity to the uh, crankcase there supports it a little bit more also it gives some separation between the crank and of course the connecting rods and all that uh, separates that from the oil sump and the oil in order to keep that uh, the crank from rotating and slapping that oil every time it comes around this baffle keeps the oil off of the crank while it's spinning. So that helps the crank to spin a little bit more efficiently. Also, it prevents the oil from becoming aerated. A lot of times when you get the uh, crank going into the oil, it can aerate the oil and create bad situations where your engine is not getting lubricated enough. So really important device here. A lot of people don't even think about this. So it's got some 10 millimeter bolts in it. We're going to go ahead and remove those and remove the windage tray. With the windage tray removed, you can clearly see the crank and all the connecting rods and of course your pistons down there. Now, this is where the rotational force is created, which spins the crank and then ultimately spins your flywheel, which is connected to your transmission, which is connected to your drive shafts and all that. So this is what makes your wheels spin ultimately. And unfortunately, this thing's been sitting out in the yard, so it's kind of seized up. I wish I could turn this crank for you so that you can see all these pistons and connecting rods uh, causing that crank to uh, rotate there. You get the picture anyway, but this is it right here. And I'm gonna have a time getting that thing out because it's seized up. And this is probably gonna be pretty darn difficult, but we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna start by uh, taking some connecting rod bearing caps off and trying to hammer out one or two pistons. And then see if I can get the uh, the crank loosened up from there and just keep on going that route and see what we can do. Let's take one of these connecting rod caps off here. So this is the connecting rod bearing cap right here. The bearing didn't come out with the cap. This is the bearing or one half of the bearing right here. It's not looking too horrible there. And like I said earlier, guys, uh, I'm, I'm going to be very rough with this engine. This isn't how you handle an engine that you plan on using. You don't beat the mess out of everything, so just uh, keep that in mind as you're watching this here. See how that bearing just kind of sits in there like that? There's two halves of the bearing. The other half is a part of the, uh, or on the connecting rod there, so I'll show you that once I get the pistons out. All right, let me see if I can get this piston out right here. This is not how you do it, guys. Like I said, this is a junkyard engine here, so. And that's, that piston is seized up. And we got some motion. I know some of you are cringing right now, and <laughs> that's okay. Look, this is the situation, guys. So I'm making these videos. I actually work at a shop, and I'm making these videos in my spare time at home. So I can't bring all my tools home all the time. So and sometimes I try to get prepared for a video, and I'll forget something. So you get this, but at least I'm telling you it's not right. But <laughs> not that correct tools would work on this engine in the condition it's in anyway. So. You want to be down there to catch the piston as it falls out we're just going to let it fall out all right so it seems i managed to get my pry bar stuck but i moved on to another piston and this one's wanting to come out so let me go ahead and wiggle it out 
there we go we have a piston and I'm gonna go ahead and work on the rest of the pistons off camera there but we got one out guys well I managed to get enough pistons out to free up this crank so I can actually get the crank to spin for you now and you can see on the end there I got two pistons still connected you see how this thing it's actually moving pretty freely there that's how it rotates And you can see this mechanism right here. This is the trigger wheel for the crankshaft position sensor. And that lets the PCM know what position the crankshaft is in at all times when the car is running. I went ahead and turned the engine around, or right side up, so that you can see the pistons go up and down on the bores there. Let me spin the crank for you. So what's going on is Whenever the engine is running, there's an explosion that happens on the top of this piston here in the combustion chamber. So as you know, the engine ingests air and fuel on the intake stroke, and then it compresses that, comes back up. Well, once it gets to the top of the compression stroke, the spark will ignite the air-fuel mixture, and it will cause that air-fuel mixture to ignite, pushing that piston down. So that pushes the piston down, and as you know, the Pistons connected to, to the connecting rod. The connecting rod is connected to the crank. That causes that crank to spin. And that rotational force, of course, goes through your transmission and then out to your, your drive shaft and your drive wheels, of course. And of course, as you know, after the combustion process happens, the piston goes down and then it comes up. That's the exhaust stroke. It will expel all that used up exhaust gas into the exhaust system. This is your piston right here. On the piston you have rings, you got two rings right here, and then below that right here you have an oil ring that goes around. And then this is the piston skirt, of course that's the top of the piston there. And the piston is connected to the connecting rod via a wrist pin, and that allows it to have a little bit of flexibility like that. Whenever the piston is traveling through the bore, it will rock back and forth like that on the connecting rod. Now, something special about this connecting rod right here, um, when I first saw this many years ago, I, I thought something was wrong here. But you see how the cap on this rod sits with the rest of the connecting rod there? Let me take it apart here for you. See inside there? It looks like it broke, and it did. Uh, they crack these at the factory whenever they make them. First they bore them, and then they crack them apart like that, and it actually helps them to fit perfectly together when you're assembling the engine. Whenever you get them just right, it's like they lock in and it's just perfect right there. Of course, your bearings go inside here like this. You got a little locating tang right there and the bearing kind of fits in there like this. Of course your bearing, the other half of your bearing goes on this side here. Just like that. And then your two halves fit together around the uh, the crank there and of course you bolt them together well let's try to get it perfect there for you and you bolt them together and that makes a tight fit there around that uh, crank there moving right along here i'm going to go ahead and remove the rear crank seal um, i actually unbolted this earlier off camera and this is the main seal on the back of the crank and that seals the oil from leaking outside, of course. Uh, it's also got some sealing surfaces right here that made up against the back of the engine block there. Now, another really cool feature to point out here, you see down in the cylinder bores there, just above that, uh, the crank throw right there, that is an oil jet, and you have them on all six cylinders. And what takes place there is, when the engine is running, oil is shot to the back side of the piston to help cool that piston down and lubricate it. So I, I just thought that was really cool. I want to show you that too. Now back on this side here, you can see that you have these caps here. These are your main bearing caps for your crankshaft. And that's what holds the crankshaft in. And th that's what the crankshaft spins on right there. That's the center line of the rotation of the crankshaft there. And of course those caps uh, house the bearing that that uh, crankshaft spins on in there. They're much like the bearings that you see on your connecting rods, just a little beefier and a lot, a lot larger. 
Well, folks, that's pretty much it, apart from taking the crankshaft out and those jets that I showed you. Um, that's where I'm going to end this video right here. I think that uh, we've gone over enough here. This has been sort of a superficial teardown video. I didn't go over every single uh, nuance of this engine here, uh, but hopefully this was entertaining, and hopefully you gleaned a lot of information from it, and it helps you. So, folks, Please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge. Uh, if you do end up applying this knowledge, uh, I may need to clarify some things. That's why I do that. And also, please read the disclaimer at the very end of that, guys. Thanks again for watching. I hope you stick around for more of my videos. See you later.